Hey everybody, Quint Lear's NewHomesales.com. I'm here with Carol Morgan. Carol, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Quint. So we have something big that just came out, and I think we're first to announce it. What What do you got? Just came off the press? Just came off the press. Social, Hold it up. Shows that. Social media for your business. Social social media for your business. Now look, Carol is an industry expert. She's a MERM, Master of Residential Marketing, a CAPS, a Certified Aging in Place Specialist, CSP. Any designations that you don't have? <laughs> There's lots I don't have. NHB has lots of designations. <laughs> One of the things I admire about Carol is you're, you're always learning. I mean, you're still studying. You're still creating. This is your latest book. Let me ask a question. Why another social media book? Why create another one right now today? So my first few social media books were very much geared toward home building, but they were geared toward setting up your accounts. So this one's more about marketing and how social media fits into the big picture of marketing. So how does it fit in? Because we're, we're still struggling. I struggle with it. I talk to business people. They're still trying to figure it out. You've got the secret sauce. Give us some tips. So what we like to do when we look at a marketing program is make sure that they have the foundation in place. So that would be their website, you know, website with strong SEO, content, and branding. So once you have those three things in place, then what you really want to do is look at driving traffic back to your website because after all, that's where you want people to engage with you. So using social media as a method to send people to your website and to engage with them on social media, you know, it's a great way to just get more eyes on your site and more eyes on your brand. That's interesting. So it's more of a medium or a vehicle to push people back to the foundation because some people are just skipping the website. So websites now are still in play. Websites are absolutely in play. And you know, the challenge is if you skipped that part of it, you're really skipping away to communicate directly with your buyer. So if you just have a Facebook page, on your Facebook page, you can't really reach out to them. You can't really engage with them. Um, they might like your page, but unless you're really engaging and using like Facebook Live to reach out to them, you don't really have a way to message them. So you're still kind of waiting on them to come see you, you know, to come visit you, gotcha. to come send you a contact form. And you know, your website in some ways is the same. It's the same. You're waiting for them to engage with you, but it's the one thing that you own, you control. You know, you don't own and control Facebook. And we remember MySpace, one day it was hot and the next day it was not. So I think social media is going to continue to evolve and change. And it's very important to control your, your brand and your message. And the only way you can really do that is through your website. What's the biggest mistake you see home builders making, you know, with their marketing, with their social media? If you were to say, I see these three things or one or two things, what, what would that be? You know, a lot of it's just keeping it up to date. So as it relates to websites, keeping them up to date, keeping it fresh, making sure that your inventory that's there is still for sale, um, you know, updating your content as far as your blog or your news section so that they know what's fresh and new, having videos on your site. You know that probably more than anyone. Video's huge. So video, imagery, same as true on Facebook, keeping it up to date. You know, if you go to a Facebook page that hasn't been posted on this month, you kind of assume they're out of business. So having something fun that they want to read, a reason they want to come back and engage with you. How much is too much? Because, you know, it's always, uh, you know, hey, look at me, look at me. But then what's, what's the mix there? You know, I get asked that every now and then. Um, you know, they're not going to see everything you post. And sometimes I think we as marketers feel like we're doing too much. But they're not going to go through and read your whole Facebook page. Chances are if they've engaged with you on Facebook, they're engaging through their news feed. So, and they're going to be on there, you know, 30 minutes here and 30 minutes there. And if your news doesn't happen to pass through their feed while they're scrolling through it, then you've missed them. So, you know, we usually recommend posting once a day as a minimum, but I see companies that get away with posting four or five, six times a day on Facebook and they're not offending anyone. They're getting more followers, not less. What, what are the platforms that are hot right now? Because, you know, it's, it's, that's something I'm struggling with. Like, okay, do I spend time on Twitter, on Facebook? Inst what, what is it? What do you recommend? Right. Well, I, re Facebook is the two, two million, actually it's two billion pound gorilla because there's two billion users there. So obviously that's one you can't ignore. Um, and then beyond that, uh, YouTube. You need YouTube because you need video. Um, and then it's kind of a toss up on what you want to do next because the numbers are all about even between Pinterest and Instagram and Twitter. Um, Snapchat's numbers are really not high enough to justify spending a lot of time there. Um, and that buying group isn't in our market yet. So it's one to watch and maybe play with, but I wouldn't spend a concerted effort there. Do you focus on one, you know, one thing and dominate it or kind of spread it out and then touch, you know, kind of play your cards across the scheme? I think it depends on how big you are as a company. 
So I'd say if you're a small company, maybe you're a small remodeler, I'd pick one or two sites. But if you're a big builder and you've got 20 new home communities, I'd work on domination. It's all a numbers game. You know, how many eyes do you need on site to get the number of buyers you need through the door to convert enough of them into homeowners? Anything else we need to know about your new book that just came out that you're saying, look, this is like, give us, sell me on this book, get me fired up on it. So this book is kind of fun in that we talk about marketing in the big picture and there's self-evaluations throughout the whole book. So there's a checklist at the end of each chapter that you can go through and check and see, am I doing these things on Facebook? Am I doing these things on YouTube? You know, and there are ideas for each site. So it's kind of quick tips and then a self-survey of, you know, where do I rank? Great. Um, you, I, I mean, I remember years ago, I want to say in 2008, and you were tweeting, and everybody was like, what is tweeting? So you've been kind of an industry leader, industry innovator. Why do that? What's your, what's your why? What gets you out of bed? Why keep producing? What, what are you up to? That's kind of a good question. So I actually made a pretty hard turn toward what was new media at the time in 2005 and started blogging in 05 and 06. And I honestly had clients who thought I had two heads. And they're like, well, we don't get it. We don't understand it. But if it's another way that you're going to put our news out there, then okay, go ahead. And um, I even had someone very close to me at the time that said, you know, your clients don't understand this and they don't appreciate it. And you're spending a ton of time on this. And at the time I was like, you know what, if I don't do this, I'm going to be a 40-year-old dinosaur with no agency. And, you know, it's kind of funny if you look at the math and, you know, it, it was all true. But to me, I saw the benefit in blogging. And the benefit in blogging is the same today as it was, you know, in 2006. The benefit is you can increase the eyes on your website and you can increase the number of hits to your website by at least 25% maybe more. The statistics out there from HubSpot and the statistics from other big sites that monitor blogs are phenomenal. So if you do it and you do it right, it's a really nice unfair advantage. And what it costs you is negligible in the scheme of marketing. So, you know, I kind of social media evolved as new media turned into social media and we started looking at the other sites as they came on board and as every new site launched, I just looked at it as how can I fit this into the marketing puzzle? and make it work for our clients and help them really have an unfair advantage. You know, how can we help them get more traffic? So it's, you know, that, that's, that's why I'm passionate about this, is it's one way that in today's world you can really reach out, engage, embrace. And, and you know, it's your, it's your digital handshake with, you know, with the future home buyer. I, digital handshake. That's you better get that URL. That's I can't get that URL. Actually, a friend of mine named Paul Cheney wrote a book called The Digital Handshake, and it's probably, oh wow, I bet it's over ten years old now. But it's an excellent book talking about how your online presence really is your first meeting with that potential customer. We should connect and write digital high five. What do you think? Oh yeah, let's write digital high five. I like that. Digital fist bump. Digital fist bump. Okay. Hey, now check this out. This book, and congratulations, by the way, it's Thank big you. time. It's actually published by the National Association of yes. Home Builders. Tell everybody how we can connect, get your book, what's your website? So you can get the book through Builder Books. So just go to builderbooks.com. You can connect with me through Denim Marketing, and that's denimmarketing.com. And then clothing, no clothing? Uh, we always laugh. We get a lot of questions on, do you market for jeans companies? Is that what you market? Well, you know, we all like to wear jeans. Our whole office likes to wear jeans. We don't market for blue jeans yet, but if there's a company out there that wanted us to market their jeans, we'd love to do it. Well, it's cool. And, and um, what's the future? So, you, you know, 2005 we're doing it. What do you see now? What's your prognostication? If that, that's, damn, that's, wow. What's, that, what's your prognostication for, for the future now? Wow. So for the future, I think the big trend we see coming in a cool site you could follow is called Facebook IQ. And, you know, of course, Facebook knows everything about all of us. But the one trend that we see over and over and over on that site is it's not just about reaching them, but it's about reaching them with the method that they want to consume your content. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. So with video, if they're watching your video, they might be willing to watch it and play the sound if they're sitting on their couch. But if they're in their office and they want to read the content or see the content of that video, they might be more likely to read the summary below. Gotcha. Um, wow. So it's about providing the information to the consumer in multiple formats so they can consume it no matter where they are in the format that they want to see it. That, that's genius. And last thing, and by the way, if you want to know when we're halfway through an interview, it's when I say one last question. One last question. So, okay. here, but I do have one last thing. <laughs> we'll sign off with this. Okay. Because you're, you're throwing a lot of information, and it's overwhelming to a lot of people, and they're discouraged. 
give some sales manager, marketing person some encouragement right now. What would you say to them you know, in, in trying to jump in in this new pool? Yeah. Well, you know, it's really all about the content. So having a strong content plan. Because what I hear the most is I know I need to be doing it, but I just don't have the time to do it, or I don't know what to post, and we're always posting it on the fly. Well, they all have some sort of marketing plan. So look at that next three months or the next six months, and what are the promotions? What are the incentives? Where are you opening? If you're doing a remodel, when's that remodel gonna finish? You know, look at the milestones in your business and start your content plan with that. And then try to find a few people on your team who like to write or will take photos or will shoot a video or do a little iMovie on their phone and get them to help. Because you can really make it a lot easier if you've got that plan in place and know what you want to do proactively versus always waking up and going, oh, God, I have to post something again today and I have no idea what to say. So make it fun. Yeah, make it fun. Make it fun and figure out ways to get your raving fans to do the heavy lifting for you. You know, have a contest. You know, get them. We just did an Elfie selfie contest for Kuiper Homes in California. And the, we had Elfies in all of their model homes. And the idea was to get people to go into their homes, find Elfie, take a picture with Elfie, post it to either Facebook or Instagram with a specific hashtag. And then we randomly drew a winner from everyone who participated. And they got a $500 Amazon gift card. So, you know, we got them out to the models. And they, you know, some lucky winner got paid for their diligence, you know, to show up and help us out with some marketing. Yeah, well, Carol, you're destined for greatness. You're doing amazing <laughs> things. Congratulations. Everybody, buy this book. Build there book. it is. Builderbooks.com. I'm proud to know you, and thanks for being on the program. Thank you so much. Any I last, appreciate it. Yeah, any last words? You know, go big or go home. Or even better in our industry, go big and go home. Ooh, that, man, why do they keep... You, uh, you beat me to it. Congratulations again. Thanks for being on the program. I appreciate your time.